Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a bit of a look at Apricity OS. Now, um, I've been playing with this distribution in a virtual machine for uh, a couple of days now, on and off, and I just thought I might uh, show you guys what I found. So I've got the DistroWatch page for Apricity OS here, and as you can see, it's based on Arch. And if you go to the DistroWatch front page, and you start looking at uh, what the, you know, there are a number of Arch-based distributions which are making their way up the ranks pretty sharpish. Now, of course, Manjaro is number three. Now, before I carry on, I do want to point out a chief proviso here, and that's that the page rankings in uh, DistroWatch, these sort of analytic-looking charts here, uh, are not representative of the distribution as a whole in its absolute use, because in that case, I'm pretty sure Ubuntu would win out outright by a long way. But this is more a list of distributions that seem to be gaining a bit of speed within the the Linux enthusiast community, if you know what I mean. So what I would call the you know the Linux community um, and BSD, of course, in there as well. Um, so it's certainly more representative of perhaps uh, people that visit the website, or certainly a lot more representative of people that visit the website rather than people that just go about their day to day using their Linux operating system and not really questioning too much about it. I think most people I know who use Linux sort of, um, you know, outside of the internet space, you know, sort of people I know in my day-to-day -day life that use Linux, they, like, you know, install the long-term support release of, of an Ubuntu distribution, and then they'll, you know, they'll do their updates, and they'll just, but they'll just use the same programs and the same software for, for a couple of years, and, and it, you know, barely will even occur to them that they're using Linux, and especially nowadays when you've got people who are learning to code specifically for the cloud or, for, or specifically online, the Windows development is, is not really the thing that it once was back in the days of, of, of the late 90s. Um, and you actually see now, particularly in America, but you're seeing it rolled out in other countries, where uh, Chromebooks are like, you know, they're being dished out in schools um, pretty uh, in a pretty widespread fashion. And that's teaching people to to, to code online, which kind of makes the, the, the difference between, um, you know, even Windows and Linux not as stark as it was 20 years ago. So a lot of people who who I know who who use Linux really just use it as a as a gateway to to the internet more over anything else. And um and Linux works quite well with that and and, and with Chromebooks being dished out uh, you know sort of um to a lot of schools nowadays as well. You're seeing that the next generation of programmers are going to be programming for the cloud. So um there is definitely a difference between how the how people that are enthusiastic about Linux see the Linux ecosystem of of distributions and how people that might sort of might use it but don't really care about it you know there is a stark difference where there might not have been before which is which I find quite interesting there are there are casual Linux users where 20 years ago or not even not necessarily even 20 years ago but even even 10 years ago in 2007 that was that was much less the case now so anyway before I digress any more, Manjaro coming in at number three. You've got Antergos coming in at number ten. Um, you've got a few of the Ubuntu-based distributions because, of course, that was uh, you know Ubuntu is a, is a good distribution to build another distribution off the back of. It's got a great um, software repositories and all that kind of stuff. But then um, there is Apricity, which comes in at number thirty-one. So you know it's hardly a takeover, but you're seeing more and more Arch-based. Linux distribution sort of find their way up the charts. And that seems to be because it's like you've got Ubuntu for for sort of steady, stable, scheduled releases with a decent repository behind them. But if you want something that's a bit more cutting edge and you're a bit more willing to roll up your sleeves and fix stuff, then Arch-based distributions, are, you know, they seem to be where it's at nowadays with access to the AUR, which is an obscene amount of software. Uh, and 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 um, a lot of cutting edge uh, versions of of things like LibreOffice and um, and all the other applications in the repository. It certainly has its appeal, and of course, for a long time, it was the Arch installer that was putting a lot of people off because it was just it was a bit it was a chore basically. So we are seeing the rise of these Arch based distributions, um, and it'll be interesting to see maybe this time next year or maybe at the beginning of 2018 how many of these distributions which which are based on ubuntu are replaced by ones that are based on arch or even are we going to see distributions that are uh that have like one branch based on 
uh, Ubuntu and another, you know, Ubuntu maybe LTS or something, and then another branch based on on Arch with the distinct idea of one being sort of more cutting edge and, and the other being a bit more uh, slow and stable, as it were. Just a thought there. Um, I think that Netrunner do something in that similar vein. And we're a Netrunner there. Somewhere down there, but uh, oh, no, I, I spotted them and then I unspotted them. Dang it. Oh, Ubuntu Gnome's down at 64. That I really would have thought that one would have taken off a bit more than it did. But I remember 64, like like I say, this is the distro watch rankings and um and, and Ubuntu Mate is clearly st still down at 18. But it is the uh it is the second favourite of the uh and then KDE KDE Neon down behind it. And Lubuntu, one which never gets talked about very often, also um Quite high, actually, for what I think. That's like, you know, by far and away the most popular um, LXDE based distribution. So, anyway, sorry about all of that digression, but this is a Pricity OS. So, if you, if you, you may notice from the website that it looks very, very similar to Elementary. In fact, I'll pull up the Elementary website here. So, Elementary, which comes in at number eight based on Ubuntu, it uses the Pantheon desktop, which is so you can see here in this screenshot, that's what it looks like. It looks very gnomey, doesn't it? It looks very much like what you've got here. I can minimize this. This is this is the Apricity desktop that I'm on today. So um, if we go to the website, where does it say that? Um, there it is. And you'll see that the website is, in fact, very, very similar. Um, it's got, of course, uh, the screenshot there. The uh, the the name of the distribution in the nice font, little catchphrase there, the sort of the stark black and dark, uh, the stark um, white and dark grey, which uh, which is I do quite like. The, that is a nice looking website from both um, Elementary and Apricity. You know, nice clean. Uh, I got to say, just on just on another digression on websites that. Um, uh, websites is Antergos is good, right? But I always find with Antergos, with all of this, it doesn't it just seem like a bit more JavaScript than you really want. It's, it looks very nice, but I just I've got to say, websites that that do unnecessary JavaScript just 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 get at me like that, don't they? Right. So anyway, a pretty OS looks clean, looks great. It uh, outlines uh, a lot of the same things that, that element. It looks very much like like elementary, but based on Arch. Elementary had gone down another route. So let's have a look at the download options. Uh, you've got a pretty OS here. So um, it is a rolling distribution, but the last image seems to was was released late last year. You can I, I always appreciate it when they give you torrent options as well. Uh, I like this because. Sometimes it's it's a nice way for people that don't really have that much money uh, to to give back to the community by 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 seeding a torrent. I think that's a great way that um, that you know it's a good example of how community action can actually uh, be a tangible, substantial benefit to uh, to a distribution there. And you don't need to to be too invested in the distribution itself. And then there are some develop uh, development downloads down there uh, for users wishing to contribute, which is great. I like that. So it comes in Cinnamon and Gnome, Cinnamon and Gnome. And you may notice that it's the Gnome that looks a lot like the Pantheon desktop of Elementary. And the reason I say that, and the reason I bring that up, uh, is because this is actually just the Gnome desktop with a few, uh, with a number of tweaks. And I'm going to just go through the tweaks today. So basically what you can expect is a really nice installer, a really good looking experience from beginning to installed desktop. Uh, didn't have a single problem with it, but as I often have to say, this is all done through a virtual machine, and the thing about doing uh, software, you know, like testing stuff like this and, and experiencing Linux distributions through a virtual machine like this is because, is, is, is skewed because a lot of people test things in virtual machines first, like that's the first place you'll test something. So you can expect that um, this being a very common setup and this being a way that uh, a lot of distributions are expected to run. Um, and and they don't have to deal with a lot of the hardware quirks that bare metal might have. Um, you will often see more like a distribution run more reliably in a virtual machine 
rather than than when it comes to bare metal and the number of times i have ran a distribution on a virtual machine with zero errors and then in you know then installed it to bare metal only to uh to have a lot of problems is is quite a high number so so definitely bear that in mind also because this is the gnome desktop i'm just going to flag up the do the activities thing the the animations just don't look as good um for some reason they, they it has improved over time but with virtual machines GNOME just has never had a smooth, uh, I've never had a smooth experience. I've never had a particularly problematic experience, but just just never, never like as smooth as a, other distributions. Actually, no, K KDE Plasma also have the same kind of problem. Um, it's like, again, not, not a major issue, but it's just something that if you're, if you're trying to get a decent appraisal of what a distribution might look like and how smooth it might be, um, just understand that when I do these uh, virtual machine videos, it, it only gives you a, a approximate idea. So anyway, uh, you it comes with the Arctic Apricity theme, which this is the dark version of it. I, I tend to just prefer dark themes. And as you can see, it looks near identical to Arc. So it seems like they've taken Arc uh, and then they've they've given it a bit of polish. They've given it a bit of an icy shine, uh, it seems. And uh, I can give you a demonstration as to how, uh, as to what the icy, can I give you an, yeah, global dark theme. Oh, I might have to log out and log back in, so uh, I'll leave that for now. Now, once you've actually just installed and got it up running, you've got a near identical distribution to to something like uh, Antergos, uh, because they are just like Antergos and Apricity, or they do have like an additional repository that they bring in. Um, for the most part, it's still sort of Arch um, at, at its root. So um, a lot of it is the the default user interface uh settings so the the plugins that they use and the um and and the installation process and the hardware detection and all that kind of stuff that's really what you're sort of appraising here because once you've gotten to this stage like everything else is arch so um that's uh for the, for the most part there are sometimes like manjaro will have like a kernel manager and and some other things which are actually quite quite nifty not essential but they're nifty little extras so the thing that I wanted to bring this in specifically for is the extensions, because instead of using the Pantheon desktop, they've just added some extensions into the GNOME desktop. Now, I've taken a few off here because I always feel this may be an old habit that the more add-ons that you have, the, the worse your performance will be. Uh, so I've taken one or two of them off, um, but for the most part, I've decided specifically to keep uh, everything the same. Uh, to keep things like as visually similar as possible, but you can have, but it comes out of the box with a lot of GNOME extensions as well. So you can have a taskbar there, um, which is pretty cool. So it gives you the icons in the top, uh, up in the top left here, and the ability to switch desktops. It gives you all the options down there. Um, Okay, and shows legacy. Oh yeah, this is so top icons. So the uh, icons at the top here, um, up here, so you can see the the upgrade icon. Um, that can be quite useful. I don't necessarily have that on my Manjaro gnome at the moment, but I might think about getting it. Uh, a tiling window extension. Oh, that's interesting. I don't even know what that is. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that now for the sake of this video, but that would be that'd be interesting. Uh, and then you can oh a trash button on the gnome. Okay. Anyway, I'm just fiddling around here. My the reason I I I, I brought you guys here is because the thing is with this distribution is that it does require on a number of um third uh, number of extensions to actually get it looking the way that it wants to look, and um. That can be an issue because sometimes you can update GNOME and they'll do like a big GNOME release and then uh, several of your extensions could then end up breaking. So, and, and I have had that with Antergos before where the, the, I've updated GNOME and it went from like GNOME 18 to GNOME 20 or something to, something like that. And there was a big change in um, in how extensions were done and all that kind of stuff. And it, it did require some finagling, but to be honest, it was, you know, so, so I, I've always sort of taken it as a standard um, course of action to be as comfortable with the standard GNOME desktop as possible because that's the one that's least likely to change and, you know, the muscle memory builds in and so forth. So it uses the same uh, software center, or not software center, the same um, package manager, rather, uh, as, um, as Manjaro and 
possibly Antergos now. Uh, it's called Pamak. Um, it's good. It does the job. I like it. It works. It's basically the synoptic package, uh, synaptic package manager of Arch and Arch-based distributions. Looks great. And you can see here, uh, you know, you've got all your got all of your packages there that you can choose to install or not. Uh, works, you know, so you, you search for something like that. And then um, bish bash bosh, install away. And as you can see, I've got keypass x up here. This is usually my standard QT4 application just to test how they look. And as you can see, it seems to have adopted the default light uh, the the light theme um, that Apristy has, which is fine. I, I believe this is like a general thing that it's only like the GTK apps that um, that have the light dark theme setting at this point in time, um, which is fine. I mean, if I was that enthusiastic about having a dark theme uh, on all my Qt apps, I would just get like an outright dark theme like Arc, which I do actually have on my my, my Manjaro desktop. Anywho, um, so that looks alright actually. Sometimes. Um, Qt applications can look a little bit ropey on distributions, but most distributions seem to be getting ahead of that now. So just before um, I head off, I'm going to take a look at the default included applications, simply because just to see what, what comes out of the box, but this is Arch. You can expect everything in Arch to be in the, in the repositories and all that kind of stuff. So you've got Google uh, Chrome, actually, which is very interesting. So it doesn't include the um, Chromium. It doesn't include Firefox. It actually includes Chrome. And in some ways, I kind of wish more newbie-friendly distributions did that. And I know some of you guys are going to be so disappointed with when I say that. But the thing is with, with Google Chrome is that things like Netflix run on it out of the box. Like, it... And to explain to someone that doesn't care about computers. It's not that they're stupid, it's not that they don't know, it's just they, their interests are elsewhere. And they don't really care for the difference between Chromium and Google Chrome. And if Chrome, Google Chrome can do something that Chromium can't, Netflix nevertheless, then those people aren't going to be listen, interested in an explanation and the people that do care can switch it out. That's kind of where I'm coming from at it. I'm not saying every distribution should include Google, uh, Google Chrome, but um, but I, I you know I, I certainly see the point in, in in putting it there over something like Chromium. Uh, that's becoming less and less the case as um, standards sort of begin to standardize, as it were. But um, but still, I mean, you want the most full featured browser, um, and and it's not you know I mean you know it's it's not necessarily a homage to open source to put Chromium in because there is plenty of binary blobs in almost every Linux distribution. So it's it's uh, it's not necessarily even an issue of purity. Um, I, I use Chromium. I like the, the open source element and I appreciate it and I'm incredibly glad that there's an option there. Um, but I, I think that if, you know, I think that when it comes to user-friendly and newbie-friendly distributions like this, that are designed for people that don't necessarily care too much about Linux, then then, then I think there is a strong case for for Google to be uh, to be put up there. Don't like the signing in thing though. Ooh, that thing creeps the hell out of me. But uh, and then we've got the the dark theme there. So the default applications. Um, the egg, you've got the Adam Roo stuff. It all comes up as alphabetical here. Um, it's interesting how they seem to have crammed the icons into a more compact fashion as well. I don't really like that because you can't necessarily. Uh, read much of the titles. I don't know if that's part of the theme. I don't know if that's part of it running on a 720 resolution in a window. Um, it's not necessarily a big um, uh, issue for me because it's kind of very much the case that you're expected just to to push like the Windows key and then start typing. So you know, and then it will come up with something like that. Um, and it's usually like two or, th or it's about three or four keystrokes overall, including the Windows key uh, in that event. But um, so yeah, we can prove the um, just the layout of all the uh, the applications we've got there. Uh, it comes with Play on Linux and Steam, which is nice. Uh, it uses the Totem Video Player, standard terminal, tweak tools, transmission. It's good, uh, good BitTorrent client. Uh, it's most distributions seem to come with transmission now. There's a Qt version, text editor, Steam, all good. Uh, Steam allows you. I think those are the two different runtimes. So you can run Steam with the runtime that's included with Steam, the official runtime, or you can use your own 
uh, like dependencies and stuff, so you can potentially mitigate a few bugs that way. Really um, nifty feature. Never had to use it, but um, but I do like the fact that uh, that you can do that. I like the fact that Steam is ported incredibly, like, decently and properly over to Linux as well. Not just to, to Ubuntu. They could have just made it Ubuntu-specific and left it there, but no. Like, everyone was, was invited in on the fun, and I think that's amazing. Uh, you know, i I got to say, like, Valve's attitude to Linux has been excellent. It's not an afterthought. It's it's solid. I mean, I think GOG consider Linux an afterthought, and you don't usually get that from the smaller company, but, you know, between between Valve and Itch.io, Man, I'm 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 as hap I'm a happy camper. So yeah, it comes with uh, GIMP. Uh, it comes with the is that the the simple U? Uh, is it UFW firewall or something? Um, yeah, that looks like it. That's a good firewall, nice and easy to use. Oh, the the, uh, the dark theme doesn't seem to have taken there. Is that could could that be because it's a Qt program? I never thought so. Or it might be that some programs don't necessarily support it, or what have you. But yeah, it might just be that it's GNOME native applications anyway, and even GTK applications that aren't part of GNOME might not necessarily be. Um, font viewer, that's always useful. I see no, like a number of distributions often leave that out, or sometimes even I leave it out when I install. Um, yeah, so it comes, it comes with LibreOffice, you expect that. It comes with Inkscape, so it comes actually with a full f rhythm box. Yeah, it comes with a full featured decent set of of stuff here. Uh, this is simple a simple backup solution. I don't know why there are four icons there. Uh, one's configuration, one's it. so that's that's a bit of an issue there. Don't want to say no. So that's yeah. Uh, all in all, I got to say this is looking good. But where does it fit in with uh, Antergos and Manjaro? Because it does seem like once you've mastered the arch installer problem and once you know it, it, there doesn't seem to be too where you know too too many places to go from there and when it comes to building a user friendly distribution based on arch which i think is an absolutely worthwhile endeavor um this kind of like macbook simplicity does seem to suit ubuntu based distributions more because of the especially with long-term support releases you know, or the scheduled releases, you've just got that additional level of stability. Um, so I think what, you know, the, the people that appreciate the aesthetics won't appreciate what's under the hood and the people that appreciate what's under the hood might not necessarily appreciate the aesthetics. And maybe I'm, and those of you that watch this channel might be in like the sort of the, the, the thin margin um, or the thin overlap in that particular Venn diagram. But who knows? Uh, let me know your thoughts, not only on Apristi OS, but do you run an Arch-based distribution? Do you use Pure Arch? Do you use, is it Arch Architect or Architect? Um, there are a few few about. Do you use Antergos? Do you use Manjaro? I'm still using Manjaro. Um, also, as an additional, uh, thank you to those of you that offered to help with the Redshift issue I was having in uh, my, my last video on... Uh, on on the GNOME desktop, uh, I I managed to fix it now. It actually turned out to be awkward Nvidia settings because of course, uh, and um, and I and I switched them around um, and I, I worked out the problem. And so I'm now sort of back on the, back on the GNOME desktop, happy happy as Larry because um, I've sort of come to the belief that the vast majority of uh, desktop environments, like once you get used to them, they're practically the same. They do the same job. They launch your applications and. Um, and all that, and and I think GNOME has some interesting fringe features. I like how uh, it embeds so well into Evolution. So you you know your Evolution calendar is up there on the desktop with the notifications and all that kind of stuff. Uh, XFCE has um has the um was it Orange uh, calendar, which is also quite good. Um, and if I stopped hopping from desktop environment or distribution, I would probably make better use of them. But I do like the um, the, the how it integrates with the evolution and uh, 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 how just uh, the little things that are different that are a little bit nicer and a bit more modern. Um, so I um, I'm going to do some thinking about where what what I'm going to try out next. If you have any suggestions, again, let me know down in the comment section below. But most importantly, I would like to know about your thoughts on Arch-based distributions. Are there any that you're particularly enthusiastic about? Are you glad that there is, um, you know, there's a surge of them now, whereas it used to be that all of these new and exciting Linux distributions were based on Ubuntu? And again, with Ubuntu, once you've set it up the way that you like, um, it's it's Ubuntu again at the end of the day. Um, 
Uh, so a lot of it is just doing the the chore that's setting up, I guess, in a lot of ways for, with some of these distributions. Um, but Arch has always been one of those things where you have to do a lot yourself. And these distributions that are now giving you a bit of a, a leg up are giving people that might have been previously intimidated by Arch um, a degree of confidence to actually check out some of the benefits that it has. I, th you know, I think there's certainly a place for it. Uh, I'm certainly liking the look of Apricity. It seems smooth, it seems slick, it seems like they know what they're doing and they have a vision for their distribution. Um, I certainly am going to be keeping an eye on it to see how, we, how it gets on. Um, but it could be up against some hefty competition uh, with, with Antergos and Manjaro. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Uh, that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.